And now onto another favorite, the Christmas Ruiz. Today we're gonna to take a look at something very important that many gardeners have in their garden. They ask the question, when do I prune it? How do I prune it? Do I call it a Christmas Ruiz or a Christmas Rose? You've got it, it's called hydrangeas. Let's take a closer look at them. There's so many myths around this beautiful plant, but all of us do know one thing, that we want it in our gardens. They also make great container plants, and you can buy them as instant, colorful plants, normally in garden centers around about Christmas time, that you can pop into a container and leave them on your patio for the next few weeks. Their flowers, you can also cut them and leave them to dry, and they look really stunning, even although they're dead, in just a vase. They just work perfectly. So many uses, pretty tough, and yet there's so many myths surrounding them. We're gonna start with the beginning. How do we plant them? Well, choose your position carefully, and that's what we need to do. Hydrangeas don't like the full, full blazing sun. In the full sun, they are going to burn. Their flowers are gonna scorch if we have a 35, 36 degree, which is quite normal these days. So you want an area that's either gonna get a bit of morning sun, or literally under trees, where there's dappled sunlight streaming through. And what we need to be able to emulate is thinking they grow in the forests, underneath the trees, in the beautiful matting and all the leaf mold that has fallen, and that's what we need to recreate. So first off, we need to choose our hydrangea. And going along to a garden center, you're gonna find many different varieties. Um, for instance, this is just your common, ordinary hydrangea Hortense hybrid. The color that the hydrangea will take on is based on the acidity available in the soil. And it's the aluminum in the soil that decides what color the hydrangea is going to be. There are varieties, however, that will stay white all the time. There's one particular variety called Madame Emile Mollet, which is a beautiful white. The only part that changes in the hydrangea is the little pip right in the middle of the flower here. That will tell you what type of soil you've got, if you've got an acid soil or not. Most importantly, feed it and emulate that forest setting that we're looking for. So first up, I need to make sure that I'm getting a good hole dug. So let's make sure that it's going to be at least double the depth of this bag and double the width of this bag to make sure that we're gonna get out all the really bad soil. Let's keep the top soil to one side because we can still reuse that and the subsoil we're going to get rid of. Right, so in the bottom of the hole, let's get going. What I've got in the wheelbarrow here is some acid compost. Now, acid compost you can buy from your local garden centre, and really it's the enriching stuff that hydrangeas need. You can use it as a compost and as a mulch. So in the bottom of the hole, literally filling, filling it up halfway, a good few spadefuls of my acid compost, okay? Mix it in with a little bit of the topsoil that we removed. There we go. Okay, in it goes, a nice mix. Final bits, a very small handful of organic pellets, right? And a handful of bone meal. Now we've got the stuff that magic is made of, rocket fuel for hydrangeas. Okay, let's get these babies out the way. And then another little mix to get it all ready. So when we're taking the plants out the bags, you can cut the bags, of course, but remember the easiest way in a sleeve is just to grab it here by these two little wings and give it a tug and out it comes. We want to get just the right height, which is literally just a centimeter above the original level of the nursery bag. That is what we want to work towards. So pop that little baby in there. Nice. Okay. And then our topsoil that we removed, we can add a spadeful of our acid compost to it, a little bit of organic pellets, and a wee bit of bone meal. Let's give it a good mix. Then this goes all the way around the plant. All right, folks, so I really don't mind the leaf mold. 
I've got beautiful trees up above me, so let's use it. Let's use what Mother Nature has given us. And this I've placed all around the hydrangeas. And you'll notice that I haven't planted one hydrangea or two hydrangeas. I've planted lots. Plant them in large groups and swathes so that you, when they are flowering and when they have grown up, you get this beautiful kind of sway that goes all the way through the garden. That's what we're looking for. So one on its own ain't going to do the job, unless, of course, it's just in a pot in the middle of your patio over the festive season. You will find hydrangeas available in garden centers right throughout the year, but looking different quality-wise throughout, depending on what the seasons, because these are seasonal plants. They are permanent plants. They will go on in your garden for years and years and years. So we come to the big thing. What happens when they finished flowering? When these guys start going over, when do I prune them? Hydrangeas, like any flowering perennial, needs to get pruned once it's finished flowering. Okay, so that will probably be in your garden around about February, March. That's when you need to prune them. Or depending, if they finish flowering in December, prune them. If they finish in January, prune them. It's pretty simple. So I want to show you how we're going to prune them and how we go about it. Get a good pair of secateurs, nice and sharp. And what you're going to find is that in every plant, as nature predicts and as nature permits, look here, already, can you see? They're the new leaves that are coming through. This is next season's growth, already starting to push through because the plant realizes that these guys are nearly over. So what you'll see when you look deep down into the plant, here's the major foliage already starting. There's some new buds, there's some new buds. There they are as well. We want to prune to the start of the new buds. So in this case, bang, it's going to be there. Follow this one again. Let's show you another example. Let's lean this over. Starting of the new buds, can you see them there? Prune it. And you're going to say to me, oh, Tanya, there's hardly anything left. This is a year old plant, folks. By next year, it's going to be up this high and you'll only be pruning down to there. By the following year, it'll be up here. When you prune down to the new buds, it'll be here. So you're not going to desiccate it and literally rip it apart every time you're going to be pruning. This is just because these are young plants. As the cold of winter arrives and, and the autumn leaves and the temperatures start dropping, these leaves will naturally just drop off. That's what they will do. They'll naturally start turning a funny color and they'll just fall off. Here we go. Nature's taken its toll. Leave these leaves around the plant. Leave them to form part of the matting. And there you start with your new growth once you've pruned it. And all it's going to do is simply just grow up beautiful lush leaves, new energy into the plant, and away we go. So how do we make sure that the flowers stay beautifully intense pink or intense purple um, as to the color of what your soil determines? Well, we want to make sure that we feed them. And we want to feed them every two weeks, literally from the start of August. So from August, every two weeks, you want to start giving them this food to make sure that they're going to get everything that they need to get that intense color. So follow the instructions, whatever it says. This is a capful into five liters of water. Give it a good stir. There we go. And you can literally apply this over the plant as a foliar feed and around it as a good drench as you're watering. And that is going to make sure that my hydrangeas are certainly looking awesome, growing beautifully, and going to give me the best flowers that I can get. And it's one plant that I certainly wouldn't go without in my garden. Enjoy them. Thank you.